everybody. Back out at the range. here. And you know, I can't ever pass up a chance to try some new ammo in the uh, the Ruger American Go Wild 300 Wind Mag. And so now the big green is back in business making ammo. I've been able to find some of this uh, 180 grain core lock. Pretty reliably, 40 bucks a box. Eh. You know, I don't know if we're ever going to have cheap ammo prices like we did before. But I thought I'd get out to the range today just to see how well it does. You know, if you've watched any of the other videos, surprisingly enough, this gun likes cheaper ammo. You know, $40 a box. Yes, I could reload. I'd have to get all the stuff for it, but... I do have a reloading press. As a matter of fact, I've got some 38 special that I reloaded. I want to try out sometime. Just planking ammo, 770 feet per second or something. But I just want to come out and see how this thing does. Oh, I gotta. Oops. <laughs> That's the problem. Parallax was off a little because I had it set at 300. That's obviously where I shot last time. So, all right. Well, let's get this thing fired up and see what happens. If you've ever watched some of the other videos, surprisingly for a uh, very light rifle, it has a very mild recoil thanks to this uh, ungodly muzzle brake on it. But I use the muzzle brake I use because of uh, another item I'll show you in just a little bit. Alright, so here we go. Eh. Hope it wasn't too bad. Not too loud. Not too bad on that round either. Let's see here. You know, minute of deer. Actually, I think it's going to be less than a less than an inch. However, I want to show you my special something something that helps tame the noise. Felt a little dry, so I added some CLP here. Okay. So I'm always interested in how the suppressor changes the point of aim. So I'm going to try three more shots. I may use these for deer hunting this year. I don't know. But let's see what it'll do. All right, here we go. Yep, dropped it, made it lower, for sure. Man, I'm not sure what the deal is with the
Well, I don't like how that's doing. <laughs> I have that problem sometimes with uh, Winchester ammo where it wants to stick on extraction. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the bolt. <laughs> Anyway, I'll pull those targets. It's going to be a quick video just to show you how those did. I'm going to take a, be back in just a few, walk down and get the targets, and I'll bring them back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's the uh, verdict on the big green, 180 grain, uh, 300 wind mag ammo. That is a 100 yards group. Uh, it's a less than an inch. I'll measure it when I get home, but that's not so bad at all. I kind of like that. And then remember I added the suppressor just to see what would happen. And obviously um, the suppressor, I think that one on the right's me, but group size is still not bad, but it definitely shoots what? One, two, three inches lower. So I'll have to take that into consideration if uh, I'm gonna use the suppressor on it. I'll need to adjust up three inches. Anyway, I'll measure the groups when we get home and uh, let you know how it goes. Hey everybody. Back from a fun day, shooting my Ruger American Go Wild 300 Wind Mag. I, you know, I used to be terrified, or not terrified, I just never had any desire to shoot a 300 Wind Mag. Not a big, super, hua hua, <laughs> recoil punishment kind of guy. But this gun is just so much fun to shoot. As you can see in the video, the recoil is very mild. If you add the suppressor, it's still mild, it just pushes more, like it's really weird, but, but it's still, my wife shoots it, she loves it just fine. But I want to try that new Remington ammo, Big Green, right? They're back in business. Ammo split from the firearms. It looks like the firearms are back online too. I've been seeing some new Remington 870s for sale. So that's all good news for everybody who likes to shoot. And the ammo's back. And so anyway, today, if you remember, I was trying Remington Core Lock 180 grain PSP rounds through the Go Wild and and this is what I found. Remember, I just shot six groups or six shots to get a couple of groups. One group unsuppressed, which was easily under a minute of angle, 0.8 inches. That's fine. You know, hey, that's pretty good. And I could have probably done better, but I'll tell you why. I was a little frustrated, and I'll tell you why in just a little bit. And then with the suppressor, I'm not as good. Notice the difference, though. Remember, I, I talked about how the suppressor, you know, one, two, drops it three inches, you know, because it is eating some of the gas and the pressure coming out. I think this one is probably me. I just don't want to shoot another round because of an issue I'm having. I'll get to in just a second, but still respectable 1.39 inches. I still think I could get that less. Anyway, why did I not want to shoot it more? I don't know if you guys noticed, but I was having trouble not rotating the bolt. No problems with that. No problems feeding the rounds. I have trouble once I open the bolt to get the rounds to come out. And this is not the first batch of ammo I've had trouble with that. I shot some Herders and some Winchester that had the exact same problem. When I shoot Federal, it doesn't seem to do it. So I don't I don't know what's going on. I know the crimp. Now let's see if I can get these open. The crimp on these are similar to the crimp on the Winchester. They're pretty aggressive. So I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this to uh, focus, probably not. But there's, like you can, you can feel the crimp, and when they crimp it, it leaves a, a couple of little tabs on either side, like 180 degrees away from each other. And when I feel these rounds after they've been fired, I can feel that crimp, like it, it's obviously there. So I don't know if it's that. Not really sure. I don't see any signs of pressure. The primers are pretty flat, but not too bad. So I'm just not really sure. So that's another. That's why I didn't want to shoot more rounds to it other than the six I shot today. Because I'm actually going to take this to my local gunsmith and have him check it out. I don't know if there's a um, some kind of burr actually in the chamber. It shoots fine. <laughs> I just, I don't know if it'll do it now, but I just can't get it to... Uh, extract very well and I'm not sure what that is yeah see so 
just even that it should not be that hard to get that to come out not sure what that is but i'm going to take it in and have him look at it and see if there's not something going on in the chamber and if there is back to ruger it goes even though i love this rifle and it shoots great it makes me a little uneasy so anyway i'll let you know how that goes i'm going to take it in tomorrow and have him look at it uh, he's usually booked up pretty good. So I got a couple of months before deer season, three months. We'll see what he finds out, but if there's something internal, he'll be able to take his cameras and look inside the bore. Then I may be contacting Ruger. I'll let you know how that works out. Other than that, I've, I've loved this rifle. I can't say accuracy wise, even with cheaper ammo, it, it shoots just great. It really does. Sub minute of angle for $500. I, I don't know what else to say, right? But it may be that it's a $500 gun. I don't know. But we'll find out. I'll let you know. As far as the ammo goes, hey, I'm glad Remington's back. And so uh, we should do our part to support them. That's a new company taking over. And they're working hard to get stuff back on the shelves for us. If you're an avid shooter, outdoorsman, like to hunt, get out there and buy some of their ammo. If you can find it. I can find the 3 in a wind bag pretty regularly now. It's, it's not hard. But I think it's because a lot of people don't shoot it. Let me know if you have any questions, like, subscribe. Once I get it back, I'll let you know what he says and what he found out and, and what we're gonna do going forward. Thanks for watching.